here back in uh, 2010, 2011 at one of the conferences downtown Coeur d'Alene. So maybe about four or five people here. So in, in 2010, that was a uh, conference that uh, John Bedini uh, was a part of by somebody who is uh, no longer involved with any of us. Uh, and this was down at the Hagedon Resort or the Coeur d'Alene Resort downtown. And that was the first time that John Bedini had uh, uh, come out and actually presented his work publicly in 20 to 30 years, something like that, I think since the uh, uh, early 1980s. And uh, I don't remember if it was 2010 or 2011, but he built this uh, big wheel over here, which I kind of called the Ferris wheel. And uh, I think Tony Craddock called it the 3TG. I was never really sure what that stood for. But uh, John had this running all conference long, and he had a 36-volt battery bank on the front end, 36-volt battery bank on the back end. John Bedini had a hand drill with a circular uh, saw on it, and he invited anybody to come up to drill a hole in the, uh, the little box to see if, uh, if anybody wanted to question whether there was any extra little energy device in there or battery or whatever. And the, the entire th time that this thing ran, uh, not only were the back batteries, of course, charged up, but the front side batteries never drained. They stayed topped up, too. And actually, some of the times, he actually had to stop it because it kept overcharging the back batteries. A lot of the principles within that Ferris wheel, um, many of you know through the Bedini SG series, and, and you know, which is the Bedini SG is the most replicated device in the world operating on these principles. This machine is a uh, little bit different, and it has an interesting two motor setup, which uh, RS will go into. Um, RS has known John Bedini for probably probably about as long as I have, and has replicated more of his devices than than most people. And uh, he's been very instrumental in the whole, you know, so-called free energy movement online, was involved with a lot of the old Yahoo groups, and, uh, um, and he's consulted with people over the years with electrical engineering. He's actually helping me right now with a, uh, John Bedini's version of the Abrams machine, which is going to be another device we plan on uh, putting into production uh, as soon as we can. Um, he's presented a couple times. A few years ago, he presented at the Eagles Lodge uh, conference a few years ago on the, um, the poor man's three-battery swapper, and the three-battery method is an interesting method that John came up with, uh, four-battery system, using um, basic off-the-shelf parts from like a Home Depot uh, to kind of get itself to recharge itself in an interesting battery-swapping method. Yeah, with the ba uh, ba so-called back, back popping circuit, and uh, he had like about a thousand pound battery bank on this running, uh, uh, yeah, 1500. And this was a, uh, you had the six coiler, John Bedini's yeah, six, six, six coiler. And so uh, RS is fortunate enough to actually have some of John Bedini's original models. I have a handful of the smaller ones, and have these as, you know, kind of a testimony to John's work. and. Uh, uh, RS is doing everything he can to kind of, can, you know, keep the legacy alive like uh, uh, the rest of us. And so, anyway, uh, help me welcome uh, RS. Like Paul Badcock mentions, every motor teaches you a lesson. When I started building the Bedini uh, SG, etc., it was strictly junkyard wars builds using things laying around left over from previous business projects. My wife's friend was looking around my garage shop and I had three uh, skate wheel motors running at the time and he asked, why were they not built better? And I said, they were only meant built or the only meant to run just long enough to teach me a lesson and that I would uh, build better models once I could uh, learn that lesson and apply it correctly. So after many, many, many models lessons and lessons over the years, here I am now able to present to you the Ferris wheel. Because John uh, knew that I understood what it is and how it operates is why he sold it to me and uh, pretty much not anybody else. This here is the uh, uh, magnets of the pie-shaped barium ferrite magnets that are on the, the wheel over there on the uh, center and the hub. Okay, 
Uh, in late 19, I started work on this and did all these videos and such. So um, this is the data I collected on the uh, spacing of the magnets and the coils. The uh, magnet spacings are very asymmetrical and uh, are not evenly spaced in a symmetrical manner. Same thing with the coils. And uh, because of the asymmetries and because of the way the, the uh, back um, plate with the coils are mounted is tilted, it creates like waves in the ocean effect. And uh, this is what Bearden come up with and John built just for Bearden. Is a Pyrex dish with iron filings that have been rusted for a long time. I've had this a while. And we're gonna use it to look at the pie-shaped magnets on the uh, Bedini Ferris wheel rotor. We'll place it. Okay, see the magnets? Oops. So we rotate it around. These are the feels that we're seeing as every magnet goes by. Look at that. And you see how it pulls up the uh, magnet space in between the magnets. And how it concentrates the closer the you field. get, the tighter that space gets. You see we're assembling the pie shapes and putting the, the bigger part of the wheel together and already the hub is already put together. And if you'll notice, the wind was blowing about 25 mile an hour through the shop. With the main motor here. I still got some creaks I got to figure out. If okay, you'll notice RPMs in the background go. is my um, four battery swapper system that Chad and I automated versus the poor man swapper with the little switches. Okay, Phil has cranked the motor up and we've tuned it so it is uh, self start. And uh, the way I understand it, that's the way John had it. And it, would, it kicks back just a little bit and then goes on and keeps running. On the first coil, with it rotating uh, counterclockwise, uh, then uh, the magnet comes in and it uh, charges or, and changes the uh, inductance of that coil because of the magnet and increases the uh, inductance so that when the main coil fires slightly after top dead center, not much current will flow. And uh, while the big wheel is running, it's acting as a generator in, in generator mode and it's not helping turn the wheel at all. Yeah, questions? If you have questions, please come up to the microphone. When you were doing the, the alternator test, did you initially excite the alternator? Coils? Yeah, we had the battery hooked up to it, and that didn't make any difference whatsoever. It sat there flatlined, and uh, it was a fail. All right. uh, we had an uh, amp meter in line, by the way, and it, it was just tenth of an amp or less, I mean, way down. That won't even charge a good sized battery. So yes, is, it, is it charging the battery bank you have there? Yes, it, it's uh, charging uh, uh, the, the charge bank and uh, running off the other set of 36. So running from one, charging the other.